This video isn't for just JWs. This is for any of the organizations or religions out there that, that practice these things, that teach these things. I've, I grew up as a JW. I've, I spent 35 years of that and as a cult in that cult. And I, there, there's things that go on in there that, that people don't understand and don't know. And or, and these things need to be brought, you know, brought out. And and people need to understand that, you know, you can't take, you can't take a young child at a very young age and indoctrinate him into a, a religion that's full of false doctrines, and and then blame him when he when he grows up, and his life doesn't turn out good, or or when he's not the person that you hoped he would be, or or even stay with an organization. I grew up as a JW I always I always grew up with the fear of, of losing my parents of, of losing being shunned not having love um, at 15 my mother my mother seen me smoking I was I was in the car and I was driving in front of her in another in my car and she was apparently she came up behind me I didn't know she was anyway she seen me smoking and so what does she do she doesn't talk to me about it at 15 she doesn't talk to me about it she goes and talks to the elders in the congregation about it and and when she does this you know of course she stopped speaking to me for a few days and um, so when she does this the elders the elders confront me about it you know they, they pull me in for a judicial committee and you know here I am 15 years old thinking I'm fixing to lose my parents not be able to talk to my parents you know, I won't have any of my friends. As JWs, you grow up, and and uh, of course they say they're friendly with everybody, but they're really not. They're they're really not. They're they're friends with with people that are in their organization. That's their family, they say. And and those on the outside, they'll be nice and they'll put on a smiley face and talk to these people, but that's not love, folks. That's not love. That's not the love that Jesus taught us to look. He taught us to look through a lens of love. Everything we do should be done through a lens of love. It should not be done through anything that, that's, that's, you know, by a man-made doctrine, by a bunch of people, seven men sitting in a, in a building making decisions on what they think doctrine is or what they think religion is. That's messed up. Religion is, is you and God your personal relationship with you and God nobody else nobody else nobody else should govern your 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 relationship and the JWs do that from a from a very young age they indoctrinate people into a into a cult it is a cult though regardless of whatever they say it is a cult it, it's when you got when you got a guy that that reads Charles T. Russell and he he has a book called Angels and Women. Now this book was supposedly written and channeled by fa a fallen angel, and you know this guy he he encourages his people to read this. Now I understand that this may have been you know in the 1800s or what have you, but when you have an organization that's just founded on on that and and you've already got this you've already got this um this doctrine introduced hold on i gotta call my dog fletcher come um you've got this doctrine introduced and you you've already got a, a false spirit or a wicked spirit that's influencing your your people that, that started this organization how do you how do you expect to to keep a clean organization or or one that's not or one that doesn't have, say, false false beliefs. If if you're, if the start of it, you're encouraging your people to read stuff by fallen angels. You know, I always grew up hearing the end's going to be this time, the end's going to be that time, 1914, 1975, 19. You know, it, it just went on. 1984, 1982. That this generation will by no means pass away. They twist these sayings. You, with the tribulation coming, if if you weren't married, do you, this this is one of the things that they teach. If you weren't married, by the time the tribulation hit here, you would always be forever just by yourself. 
the people that had marriages before the tribulation or children or family whatever before the tribulation well they were still married they still had their family but for a person that, that's growing up and being taught the end is just right around the corner i mean like it's 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 on its way it's coming we know it's here all but you know and then to be taught that well you're not going to be able to have a family and the things that you know as a very young age as a child i grew up always always extremely close to god extremely close to god things you know i used to look at the moon and say there's god's flashlight and and things you know i had my childhood was was not good it, it wasn't good at three years old my mother my mother um started well she got baptized at three but anyway it, it, it i guess it was earlier than that but about two anyway she she started studying as a jw my father was not a good father he was a uh, well he, he was a good man but he had problems after coming back from vietnam you know he had some drinking issues that he had to well he had and that was after he come back war messed him up but my mother at at a very young age started studying with the jw's uh you know she's got this neighbor that's a jw they they you know they're, they're a little bit older couple they got their lives together and kind of working it out and so my mother sees this and i can understand my mother's deception and why she thinks that that you know okay well god's god's taking care of these people you know their lives are pretty easy and you know i can understand that i can understand my mother wanting to to see okay well these people got it together and so she starts listening to them and so she gets baptized at three my parents get separated of course right after that the religion's not compatible with my dad's religion and, and everything else and so i grew up in a split family at, at three and here's the thing when you're starting to learn these things and and you, you're taught from a very young age one step one one misplaced one misplaced piece in time one misplaced piece in time can change a whole person's a whole person's life you know people don't think about this and they don't think about how something that's in a, a false doctrine in a religion can can really mess up a person's life or or their outlook on life or how it changes them and that's one of the things with with jw's and it's not just jw's folks it's it's all the religions all of them have some form or something in there that keeps them or keeps their members in line some kind of disciplinary form or something like that it's not about love it's about keeping their member quota a, a life is a, a, a the life in a child of a jw is no life that is not a life I grew up having to go door to door i mean knocking on people's door at a very young age trying to place watchtower and awakes it was it was it was good because people people wouldn't chew out a young boy at their door people wouldn't cuss out or slam a door on a, on a young boy and that was good for them that's good for business for jw's but what they don't understand is they're wrecking that child's life that child has no life beyond that 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 child when 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 you see a Jehovah's Witness knock on your door and there's a child there, that child, my childhood was miserable. I went to school. After I got home from school, I had to study for the meetings. I had to do my homework. We had five meetings a week that I had to attend to. Not to mention going out in service, preparing for the meetings, and then having to. And then, as I got older, I had to do talks on the stage. My parents told me not to worry about worry about an education. The end was coming. It wouldn't have to. I wouldn't. It wouldn't affect me. But you know, my stepdad, he's got a company, and it was always like, oh, well, you can work for him. Nah, they, that that just. That's not, that's not, there's, a person has to make his own life. 
and you you can't bring in these these false teachings and then and then turn around and, and if they turn out and then they turn out to be false and then just not even issue an apology for it in 1975 people sold their homes their businesses they sold everything and donated it to God or, or went out and and just started you know preaching JW stuff and and that was because the JW's the JW's taught that the JW's taught that the end's gonna end you know in 1975 you Jesus Jesus always taught us to do things through a lens of love and if you don't recognize first off and right off the bat that if you're preaching something and you're not and it's not from God you're you're involved in satanic worship that that's pretty much it when the JW's claim that Jesus came in 1914 and chose his people by according to what they were teaching and what they were preaching and that there would be no faults there would be no falsehood found in them no false doctrines no no Babylon Babylon idol idolatry and and it's all in there it is all in the JW org you get you get a little bit of that false indoctrination and one thing like I said one thing can change a person's whole whole life can make them miss a marriage can make them can make them with with JW's it, it goes like this You've got a bunch of people that, that are in inside of an organization and they all, they set each other up. Um, the elders set the daughters up with other, with other ones that are ministerial servants or the ones that are like, you know, doing really good in the hall and things like that. So as a kid, you're sitting back and maybe you're not such a, you're, you're not such a good kid, you know, maybe you're not such a good kid. So you feel like that if you don't get set up in life, that well, you you feel like you're gonna miss out on life, you know, and and then when the elders set these up or set these sisters up with with the brothers in the hall, and then and then their marriage falls apart, then you've got a bunch of people that that end up are broken families in the organization that are basically being recycled through each other, and you know. When you take away somebody's happiness by doing that, when you take away their life, when you ruin their life through something like that, and then you want to blame them because they messed up or because they screwed up or because they sinned, whatever. And then and then you want to shun them for the rest of their life and their family because they're no longer a JW or a Jehovah's Witness. That's false, folks. That's not love. It, regardless of whatever they say, it's oh, it's you know, you you don't, you know, do not even like Paul said, do not even give a greeting to these people, you know, and and that there'll be sheep among us, and that you know, keep the keep the flock clean. That's not keeping the flock clean. When somebody sins, you don't stop talking to them. You don't cut off their 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 brotherly association. Brothers and sisters can learn to, to cope and to help people, but shunning them, not talking to them, not giving them any form of love, or even always them, them having to think that they're going to miss out on life. These things, these things hurt and affect, and they have consequences. So what does a person say? Oh, well... You, it's, it's your fault or, or or you shouldn't be worried about things like that you shouldn't those those are not spiritual things those are not things that anybody should be worried about you know it can mess up a lot of people and a lot of people are messed up and there's more than just the JWs, like I said, that, that do this. It's it's a lot of religions that use this control mechanism to keep their members in line, and that's a that's a form of ruling by fear. It's not a form of ruling by love. 
you know, you can love somebody that sinned. Jesus came for the sinners. He didn't come for the people that are already doing good in life and that, that you know, haven't sinned or, or, he came for those that are broken and crushed. He came to give them hope. God's given me hope. He's He's taken away He's taken away a lot of pain here recently that that I grew up with. I I was a sinner. I am a sinner. I'm not I'm not perfect by any means. I sinned so much. My life was terrible. My life was was ruined. And I, I stuck it out. I stuck out through my marriage. I stuck out through so many things. I stuck it into the, the organization because I, I believed that it was true. I believed that. I was, I was, you know, I, I was told not to look at other things, not to, not to read the apocryphals, not to that those, those could. You don't know what you're getting into. You don't know what you're, you're understanding or that. Well, how? Wait a minute, who gives them the authority to tell you who or how to search out God or how God's going to act in your life? These things that you get, Holy Spirit, things like that, that fill you and bring you joy and, and, and help reveal things to you. JWs dis discount that. that that's, that's BS or bogus to them. They, they don't believe that those things can happen and they do happen. And... I want to share this message with, with people. I want people to understand that, you know, understand that, that God doesn't reside in things made of wood or stone. God resides in each one of us and He can be close to each one of us. It just takes a personal relationship to reach God, to, to love, to be able to, to find that love with Him. And He will draw you in and He will lead you in your life he will take care of you he's always provided for me even even when I was in even when I was in the cult and I, if you have a love for God God's gonna take care of you God will God will take care of you you have to you have to have that love the love is the only thing that's gonna save you and if you think that following some men or an organization listening to them or what they claim is truth, what they claim is truth and and you start believing them rather than following your heart and following God, you're gonna end up hurt. Families are ruined and and then lives are completely ruined forever. I've had I've had so many friends that have committed suicide. I've been near to it so many times. I've been, I've tried to kill myself. I've tried to do these things. God kept me here for a reason. I understand that now. I understand why I'm here. The JWs, the, the organization is full of, is full of demonic spirits. It's, it's always been, it's always been. Take a look at their history. And if you don't think that the folks in there are being indoctrinated into this or that these are affecting these people, they, they put on a smiley face, they meet you out in the neighborhood, they talk to you, they're real sweet and kind. They won't ever, they won't ever cuss at you, you know, I mean, well, most of them want, but they won't ever, they won't put on that, that false face in, in front of you out in sort of service. So take, take a look at them and understand that that's just a Band-Aid love. Whatever they're showing you when they're standing at your front door, that's a Band-Aid love. That's a love for them to go out there and put in time. We had to, we had to count our time to be able to consider, be considered active. To be able to cons be considered active, you need to be able to go out in service, put at least 10 hours in a month is what they call active. But the pioneers, my mother's been a pioneer all her life. She, she doesn't know any better. She's just blinded. She follows my stepdad, who's, who's one of the higher ups in the organization. And at, at 10 years old, I was made to copy the Watchtower, the Awakes, the Bible, their books. I, I, had to, I didn't make good grades in school. And, and you know, um, when, 
when I came home and I'd have a D or an F on my report card, my stepfather thought the best thing for me to do to improve my grades would be to add more work to my to my life. Um, I was already doing homework, like I said, going out in service. So I had to start copying the Bible, word for word, the Watchtower and Awakes. It's a miserable childhood. I had a desk. The desk was probably my best friend. I whittled on the desk. I was so bored. And I got in trouble for whittling on the desk. And But the good thing about that, I think, is that I did have time to actually cover a lot of, of spiritual things out of the Bible. And those things stuck with me. Although that there may have been false twists to those things. Or those things may have been <sighs> misguiding. The scriptures stuck out in my head and they stayed with me. I went through all the things in my life for a purpose, just like the persecution that I learned. I learned how this organization works, how the organizations work, the false doctrines, how they can manipulate people. You can't throw in a false doctrine and have truths mixed in with it because those truths will hook people. The, the truth, the truth, the God's truth draws people to him. But then when you throw in something like that, people understand and they recognize the truth from God. But then when you throw in a false teaching or something like that, that false teaching messes up people's lives. You don't get, say, so you don't get married for a certain reason. You don't get an education for a certain reason. You don't move away for a certain reason. Your, your life is completely changed because of a couple men that stand in a room and say, this is what we're going to say to our followers. And we're going to call this the Word of God. And not knowing how much damage they're doing to the young ones, never giving an apology to the people that, that sold their houses and donated all their money to the organization never giving an apology to all the children that, that committed their suicide or, or just had miserable lives oh it's all good God 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 planned that God planned that it was false light or, or old light as as the JWs would call it and say it's all old light and so that old light ends up costing people's lives Jehovah's Witnesses have so much bloodshed on their hands and they want to sit there and point out other religions and talk about these people that their cup runneth over of blood, that the, the harlot is drunk off the blood of the prophets. Jehovah's Witnesses are drunk off the blood of prophets. They have drunk every last ounce of my blood, my life. And it hurts. People should understand the pain that comes along with false doctrine and how things like that can affect people. How it tears them up inside, how their whole life can be wrecked, how they treat their children, their family, how they how they end up turning out because of something. You turn into a drunkard, you, you start drinking because you hate your life, you start you go to the doctor for depression. They put you on depression medication. They put you on pills. They, they start you on opiates. You get addicted to opiates. And then all this stuff, all this stuff stems from these tra traumatic experiences as a child. And they don't understand what's wrong with their son. Why, why, he, why, he, why is he so bad? Why is, why is his life messed up? Why is he not following God? God leads you through certain things in your life to teach you. And and they become stepping stones for you to learn. And so I'm putting this together. I want people to understand that, that if you see somebody out there, if a JW little a JW knocks on your door, ask them about these things. Ask them. Say, do you understand? How many times you guys have received old light or you called it new light at the time and do you understand how that this affects people how it changes them do you think that that's what God wanted 
has the, has the organization, has any of these organizations, has the Catholic Church, has, has any of them, have they, have they ever apologized for anyone they've ever killed, martyred? Have they ever done that? I don't see it. I don't see it. The JW say, oh, well, it's their fault because they didn't put enough trust in God. Folks, that's some kind of crazy. And that's some kind of blame game to make it all about the, the person that, that, they're, that they're teaching this stuff to. Or that they lay it out. Or that they lay it out. In their, in their books, and their publications. And then when you don't follow that, they're willing to disfellowship you. They've changed their opinion on blood donations so many times. You can have fractions, you can't have fractions. <sighs> you can't have, you can't have a... Uh, organ transplants. You can't have this. Oh, people died because of this, folks. People died. Did they ever get an apology? Did the society ever help them out? Why no? It was that was God's plan. They they remained faithful to God, is what they would say if they died doing that. But when they changed their doctrine the next year, those things are not brought up. So if you see how many false doctrines is, is in an organization or religion, you're not ever gonna, you're not ever going to know all of them. You're really not. There's so many of them, and they're so sneaky. Satan is subtle. He's not going to come out and do things that are that are that are going to put you off of God right away. They're going to be things that are subtle. And and if you're in a if you're in a religion that that teaches these things, one little thing. One little thing out of place in a person's life can change them forever. Can ruin their life. I don't know. I pray that they wake up. I pray that my mother wakes up. I pray that she forgives me for the things that I've done that, that made me a bad kid, a bad person, a bad adult. I pray that my family forgives me for, for all the, the things that I've done to hurt them to bring pain in, in, in their lives and since I've left the organization though my life has been completely changed it's it's been changed I've been so much happier me and my wife's marriage has, has been a lot better um, life is life is a lot better but there's still that residual pain and that pain hurts and trying to get over it trying to trying to figure out and make sense of all of it but the, the thing that hurts the most it's not it's not all the pain and suffering that I went through it's more or less that that I'm looked at as a terrible person now because I'm out of out of a religion that, that doesn't show love And because I'm not following God according to my parents. They won't speak to their son. They won't speak to their grandson. Their grandson goes into the hospital for collapsed lungs. They don't even call. They, my mother's so scared that she's going to get me on the phone and have to say, Greg, I guess. I, I guess that's it. That's sad, folks. That's not love. How does a mother not love her son like that? How do they teach this? How do they get away with broadcasting these things to, to their members and, and trying to pass it off as love of God and that God, this is what God wanted? So if you see JWs, say some prayers for them. You see JW children, know that that person's life is going to be changed. I had a friend, Jimmy Walton, hung himself. I had a friend, Morris Goldring, walked out in front of a semi truck in Memphis on 240. Had to, he left his, his wife left him and two kids because she found out the truth. She actually became an apostate to the organization, the JW organization. She left him and, and took the two kids. He was still in there. He's got his family tied up in that organization generations and generations of his family in that organization and all of a sudden he's supposed to leave with his wife and he's torn he's torn between between two people that he loves his family and he's torn between 
an organization, I guess, that he thought was right? What does he do? How do you handle, how do you handle things like that? They don't realize how these things can affect you and kill you and literally kill you, make you want to kill yourself. Every day turns into a living hell for you. I hope you guys understand maybe a little bit more about JWs. I would like to bring out a lot of the things or, or I just, there's so much in there though. There's so much and I don't know where to start. I don't know where to, to kind of pick up and, and try to help, you know, other than just making a few personal videos or, or something like that. I mean, you know, you've got a lot of witnessing work going on now where, where people are, are going around and actually confronting these people. And I, I love seeing that. I want to get involved in that because I, my heart goes out to the children. I don't want to see any more, I don't want to see any more people lose their lives due to false doctrines. I don't want to see any more children hurt. I don't want to see, I don't want to see people sad for the rest of their life and not know why and not be able to figure these things out. People need love first. They need to have this love in their heart. They need to have that before they start teaching about God. And if you don't have that love, the true love from God, then you're not going to be able to preach the gospel of love. The gospel of love is the only thing that a person should be able to teach. The rest of it should be taught by God. Yes, people can have discussions and talk about things, but don't make it doctrine. Don't make it something that that that, that can be pain or or end up hurting somebody. These, these doctrines are disfellowshipping. That's it's a control mechanism, people. The marrying off of the daughters to the ministerial servants and then say the ministerial servant oh he gets tired he wasn't really a good witness for god or something like that he leaves or wake up see or wake up from the organization and then you've got a girl here that's done been married once she's passed off or or the the person leaves and if she she doesn't leave she keeps her kids there or the the kids are gone whatever then then you've got a person with luggage that's, that's passed on to the next person or a desperate lady with children that, that's looking for a marriage mate. It's all the same. Mormons, I've said it in my other videos, I'll say it in this one. It's all, all of the religions have these false doctrines. Some of them are a lot more powerful and controlling and deceptive, and that's why they work so good. The JWs preach a good message in some ways. I mean, there's a lot of truth there. 